I use a Sony A7 III and for fashion photography particularly I love to use my Tamron 28 to 75 lens or a 50mm or a 85mm prime. Um, I think the best way to go about it would be to make, uh, place the main product first in your frame. Try to like have a basic idea of how you want to um, place that main product and then place the other bigger objects around it. And you can always try to different, uh, create different layers in the photo so that it's more three-dimensional and each uh, prop, even though there are a lot of it, each prop gets their own space and you still get to highlight what you want to highlight. And there should always be a common story or a common color scheme or the common vibe throughout the uh, selection of props or objects around the main product. For post-processing, uh, the first thing that I would uh, look into would be how the eye is moving in a photograph. So I'd first try to deal with and correct the composition of my picture, like I'll straighten out all the lines, I'll see if there is any unnecessary object in the picture or if, um, you know, the main uh, story or the main product or the main garment is not being highlighted. So I'll try to use a better comp uh, composition or try to frame it better first before moving on to the color part of it. So uh, when I move on to the color part of it, I generally try to have a general basic idea of the kind of vibe I am trying to create with it or the kind of mood we are trying to create uh, with the picture. So if it's like a warm, sunny or a bright, cheerful feeling, I'll try to have the over overall tonality of the product uh, of the picture to be more bright and colorful and more vibrant. If I want to portray a more moody theme or if I want to portray a more dreamy or a hazy look, then I'll give that sort of an overall tonality and color scheme to it. So in today's shoot as well, uh, there was this main subject, the model, and the whole story revolved around that model. Like there were supporting um, elements to it, like the sculptures. But my main motive like throughout the framing was that every line, every backdrop, every uh, positioning of those sculptures should eventually lead up to that main um, subject. So that like you should be able to tell the story that you're creating with the picture without having to write something with it. You, the picture itself should tell that story for you. So uh, there are two ways again to go around it. The first one would be to light them separately. Like we used a lot of cutter boards today or we used a lot of uh, directed light for each uh, element of the picture. So one way to go about it is that, that you try to focus one light on one object and the other light on the other object and try to create like different depths or different kind of patterns with it. Or the other way to go around it, again, like we try to do with another composition was to shoot the same frame but uh, with two different settings or the same light placed in different ways and then try to composite them together in Photoshop. For few shots I tried to keep my aperture quite narrow so that more things are in focus and the texture also played a really important role in depicting the story and supporting the story. For the other shots I tried to understand and study the kind of backdrop we were using and try to support it with my lighting and try to use the same kind of vibe with it. Yes, we can attempt to do that. It will not exactly match with the kind of uh, golden hour lighting you would n normally see because it's very authentic in different places, like it's very different in different circumstances. But the best way to create it is sort of have a combination of a harsh light and a diffused light and have a sort of a temperature difference to it. So maybe the harsh light that you're using, you can have a gel or a couple of layers of gel on it, a yellow gel or an orange gel to give that uh, feeling of like that warm golden hour sun. And the shadow you generally observe is very blue or kind of like less warmer than the main source. So that will give you like a quite close uh, effect to an act authentic uh, golden ass. So first of all, if I'm uh, doing a shoot, I try to 
find someone who suits the kind of story or the kind of campaign or the kind of uh, clothing we are trying to shoot. Uh, but if I have to instruct them also, I give them a vague idea of what we are trying to show. I'll show them few references, but I'll not give them exact uh, poses. I'll still let them give their input. And I feel like a lot of times models or people that we are shooting, they know their angles better. We can maybe direct them a bit to uh, get the best uh, kind of angles and shots, but a couple of like a couple of things should be left onto them. So I wouldn't change it completely. I would definitely say that you will have to change a bit according to the light, but that's where artificial light comes in and it gives you the capability of changing the light the way you want even if you don't want the subject to change or even if the other creatives want it to be a certain way with artificial lighting you have a lot of flexibility and you can modify it a bit but when you're working with natural light uh, you have to change your framing change your angles according to that light I honestly feel like phone cameras are really good these days especially if you want to talk about social media content phone cameras are very efficient and it gives you a lot of uh, versatility in the kind of you know exposure settings or the kind of lighting you can shoot in plus the kind of quality they are viewing social media content in is decent enough when you click from a phone camera so i think that is like the best uh, thing you can start off with but the main thing that you should keep in uh, mind while using any sort of camera like the way i started off as well no matter how cheap or how expensive your camera is always have a good composition in your picture because that is something any any camera can get you that depends on, solely on you yeah. so maybe just try to focus on the composition and it'll take your uh, photography to the next level as you mentioned before um, there is a lot of content in flux these days everyone is creating content and there is a lot of good content out there so i feel like the way you can stand out now is if you have a good story not just a good visual but you need to have a story or a reason or an intention behind every shot you take or every product you place talking about today's shoot i think the first thing we did was have a common discussion about this common theme that we wanted to go for then we discussed the different possibilities of how we can depict that theme and how the clothing and how the lighting and how the makeup will sort of come together to depict it we sort of listed down different options for where we can do the shoot what kind of lighting is possible and the conclusion that we came to was that we were talking about a lot of layers and human persona and how people have different kind of personalities and patriarchy and how you know both men and women are dealing with it so we picked up like few tits and bits from our experiences and from the kind of stories that everyone wanted to share and try to portray one thing in each so yeah but to have that overall theme we decided that we'll have like moody lighting so that even though we are trying to depict a different kind of story story uh, through each picture we'll still have it as like one campaign or one project that all of us worked on together So in today's shoot we were trying to talk about glorified faces that are under the influence of mediocrity and patriarchy and the sculptures that we were using kind of depicted societal noises. So once we viewed our setup, once we viewed the theme based on those sculptures, the whole theme came to life and we sort of fixed our lighting and the the kind of framing or the kind of poses we want to do according to that. So first of all we came up with like a common theme that we wanted to go for and based on that we listed down different possibilities for location different props that we can use or different kind of visual uh, things we can use so the first thing that came to our mind were the sculptures which were really hard to get of course but once that was set we had a better idea about the kind of direction we are going in and the kind of story we want to tell and what would be our base uh, support to tell that story and um so based on that we decided on the location and the kind of lighting we want to use and the kind of frame then we fixed on like few specific uh, shots that we definitely want to do each shot telling a different story and we had an overall mood board for the kind of 
poses and the kind of lighting we want to do. That's how we went about it. The main thing that I look at first or that draws my attention is the composition, the framing of it, how you are telling a story or how you are framing the main object or how you are trying to depict what kind of mood you were in when you took that picture.